morning, everyone. Welcome to our service this morning. Rockets a little tired after her parade with her cedar boughs. Kind of tuckered out there. Palm Sunday. No palms in Aurelia, so we've got some beautiful cedar. Smells wonderful. Going to celebrate with the lady them. <laughs> well, it's overcast and drizzly here, I hope. We're having a little bit better weather. If not, we take it all in stride. Uh, you know, we're pushing our way into April, and April showers bring May flowers, so off we go. We're well on our way to spring. Uh, shout out to Nancy and Michael once again for their beautiful music selections this morning. If you haven't had a chance to listen to them yet, they're on our video section in on the Knox and Bethune Facebook pages. They've been shared to both pages, as well as Forest Home. And uh, also a reminder that this coming, uh, oh, also back to Nancy and Michael, they've also let me know that there will be special music posted on Thursday and Friday as well um, this coming week. So uh, keep your eyes open for those on Facebook. Our Good Friday service is this coming Friday at 10 o'clock with communion being served. So. Have your communion elements ready. Uh, whatever you have is always blessed and, and welcomed. And our Easter Sunday service is at 10 o'clock. So we hope to have as many as, as you tune in as possible, um, either on that day or um, throughout the week as you find the time. So thank you for joining us this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For thousands of years, indigenous people have lived on this land in their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. So we acknowledge the Chippewa, Iroquois, and Algonquin people, past, present, and their emerging leaders for their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Let us now move to our call to worship. There is no power like the power of people to bring change because the power of the people won't stop. Which side are you on, friend? Which side? Justice for our children is justice for all, and we will strive for justice until freedom is won. Save us, O God, have mercy and save us. Open to us the gates of righteousness. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. We want to be respectful tenants of your beautiful garden, God, marveling at the beauty and complexity of your creation and our relationship to it. Forgive us for all the ways that we have hurt your good creation and guide us as we strive for a healed world, as we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us move now to our scripture readings. Our responsive psalm this morning is uh, Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 19 through 29. And I encourage you to give those a read sometime uh, today or throughout this coming week. But the uh, scripture reading uh, that I will be sharing with you this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. So may we open ourselves to the seeds of wisdom that lie dormant in this reading. And may our minds be fertile soil in which it may grow strong and true. Mark 11, chapters, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. The triumphal entry of, into Jerusalem. As they approached Jerusalem near the town of Bethpage and Bethany, they came to the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a colt tied up that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if someone asks why you are doing this, say that the master needs it and will send it back at once. So they went and found a colt out in the street and tied, tied to the door of a house. And as they were untying it, some of the 
bystanders asked them, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered just as Jesus had told them, and the crowd let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the animal, and Jesus got on. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches in the field and spread them on the road. The people who were in front and those who followed behind began to shout, Praise God! God bless him who come in the name of the Lord. God bless the coming kingdom of King David our father. Praise be to God. Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple, and looked around at everything. But since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with his 12 disciples. May the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Our learning with children or young at heart uh, this morning is entitled Another Way. It was many, many days later that we disciples had an idea about what the procession into with Jesus into Jerusalem for the Passover celebration meant. So we were so caught up with it, with what Jesus had been telling and teaching us. And so we walked that last stretch of the journey to Jerusalem and through the east facing gate. Jesus seemed frustrated and impatient and more on edge with us, but he was also more focused and definite than he had, we had ever seen him. And then there were all the details that fell into place. The donkey, the crowds gathering, people spreading their cloaks and leafy palm branches before him on the road, and the cheering, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. It was as though it had been all prearranged and carefully planned. Yet we had been with Jesus every day, all day, 24-7, and it all happened at the same time as the Romans processed into Jerusalem through the other gate. We had seen that procession before. That was the usual way for the powerful to enter Jerusalem for the Passover. The Roman rulers wanted to show their power. They wanted to frighten people, to make sure no one took advantage and used the gathering as so many people tried to overthrow the Roman government. Pilate would enter first, on horseback. And there would have been many, many soldiers parading with him, some on horses, some on foot. The sound of their armor and weapons all clanging would echo off the wall of the city's buildings. Mixing with the sound of the hooves and feet marching and the throwing clouds of dust up into the air. Our entry into Jerusalem with Jesus was certainly another way, a different way, a way we had never imagined we'd seen or be a part of. We entered with enthusiasm and joy, hopeful and fearless. But we didn't understand or even think about how important it was, how we were supporting another way, a different sort of power, and how it would disturb so many people. Despite the cruel Roman ways, most of us were far too afraid to stand up against the Romans' rulers even though the, that meant fighting and bloodshed and death for us. No one, not any of us disciples, ever imagined another way to face the Romans, a way where one could stand up against them without armor or without even a weapon in one's hand, but with peace and truth and love in one's heart. No one, that is, except Jesus. Let us pray. Loving God, as we process with our palms, prepare for us for what is to come. And as we read, hear, and experience this familiar story, remind us of its central place in our faith story. Open us to a new encounter with your love and an experience of your promises being kept. Amen. Well, here we are. Today is the day that begins our journey to the story that is central to our faith. The story begins with Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and continues with his arrest, trial, and death. 
and next comes the resurrection. But today is Palm Sunday, and I'm sure you all come with an expectation of what should happen on this day. Who knows, maybe one day when we're back in church, the children will parade up the aisle, waving their palm branches, and you never know, one year, maybe a donkey just may show up and make its way down the aisle. Now, wouldn't that be something to behold? In our gospel reading from Mark today, the Palm Sunday parade happens before they even reach the gates of Jerusalem. You may remember from our other gospel readings that the parade goes through the gates to the city. Now, New Testament scholar, theologian, and author Marcus Borg describes a second parade that day. On Sunday, Palm Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem from the east in a procession, riding on a donkey, cheered by his followers. And at the same time, a Roman imperial procession of troops and cavalry entered the city from the west, headed by Pilate. Their purpose was to reinforce the Roman garrison stationed near the temple for the season of Passover, when tens, hundreds, or of thousands of Jewish pilgrims filled the city. The contrast between Jesus' entry and the imperial entry sounds the central conflict that unfolds during the rest of the week. Jesus' mode of entry was symbolic, symbolizing that the kingdom of which he spoke was a kingdom of peace. And according to the prophet Zechariah, the king entered Jerusalem on a donkey, was to banish the weapons of war from the land and speak peace to the nation. The kingdom of Rome, on the other hand, was based on violence and the threat of violence. It is clear from Mark that Jesus prearranged this way of entry, of entering the city. In modern language, it was a planned political demonstration. Of course, it was also religious. Jesus did so because of his passion for God and the kingdom of God. What I am curious about is what was it about Jesus that moved this crowd of people to such a state? Maybe it was that the people recognized that they were in the presence of someone greater than themselves. Maybe it was supernatural. Perhaps they moved beyond seeing a man riding a donkey and saw their Messiah instead, a person who was about to change their world, our world, riding on an animal of peace. When you are in God's presence, everything on you, around you, and in you becomes something that will want to worship God. I can just imagine your thoughts. Oh, Sue, what, what could ever happen to make us reach that level of worship? Well, there's a saying. We all have what we need to change the church and to change the world. Isn't that quite the statement? Some of you may have heard it as a challenge. We are not where we should be. Some of you may have heard it as a hopeful statement. We are not where we could be. No matter how you look at it, I'm sure we could all agree that all of the resources we need to transform ourselves and our churches are all around us. However, the ways of the world with its tendency to lead us towards fear, there are those who are oppressed and, and so also on the limit that limits our access to the resources we need for transformation. It doesn't matter if the roadblocks are personal or system, systematic. Dealing with them is gut-wrenchingly hard work that offer, often leaves us in situations where we feel exposed, uncertain, and perhaps maybe even feeling ill-equipped. But regardless, it is part of what it means to be disciples. And so despite these obstacles that can block our way, we pre persevere because God has intended, indeed created us in our own personal way for good work and unconditional love. 
So perhaps the people at that first Palm Sunday parade were supernaturally aware that God was among them that day, shouting Hosanna, which originally meant, Lord, save us now, may have been their way of showing their own shortcomings, waving palm branches and waving, laying their clothes on the ground may have in their minds brought honor to Jesus. It allowed them to express their love and their generosity to Jesus. When you are in God's presence, when you are in the moment, everything on you, around you, and in you becomes something to honor and worship God. Remember those words. My friends, may you find openness and perhaps even the courage to respond to the moment you love arriving. May you experience Jesus Christ in a way you have never felt before. May you thankfully say, Hosanna. And on this Palm Sunday, may your love be even more generous than ever. Amen. Our minute for mission this morning is entitled Residential School Survivor Answers the Call to Ministry. It took eight years to get to where God had been calling me. Growing up, Deb Anderson Pratt would never have imagined that she would have become a minister. A Cree residential school survivor, Deb disliked the church for many years. I grew up living on the George Jordan Gordon First Nation Reserve. Religious leaders visit us all the time to try to convert us. One of them told my great grandmother, Mary Jane Anderson, that we were all going to hell because of the native teaching she was giving us. Deb has vivid memories of the day of a group of ministers were at her great grandmother's home for a meal. An argument broke out about whose theology she should pass along to Deb and the other children. We used to have a tent down the hill from our house. My grandmother told them to go to the tent and discuss whose teaching was right. And if they could agree, she would teach her children that. Needless to say, no one came back. Deb's great grandmother struggled to maintain her belief in both the traditional indigenous teachings and the biblical ones. Turmoil that was instilled in her for at residential school. She was taken to residential school when she was just four and was forbidden to mention, much less live out, traditional teachings. She had shared them with me kind of in secret, kind of in secret. She had to be subtle about it because if she got caught, she could go to jail, says Deb. So how did Deb become a minister? In the late 1980s, she took a job as a secretary in a Lutheran church. And the minister encouraged her to answer God's call. She began studying, but at that point wasn't ready to become a minister. Still, she continued to be involved in the United Church's All Native Circle Conference and eventually in 2012, began to feel the spirit pull her towards ministry again. The exact time she responded to God's call is etched in Deb's heart. It was September 14th, 2012. Deb had quit her job to look after her ill sister, whose bed she was changing. I sat down and I said, Sister, I have this strong call. God is calling me to train for ministry again. My sister had tears in her eyes and said, I think you need to answer the call. Deb contacted the Santi Soto Spiritual Center to re-enroll. The following October, Deb's sister died. I found I wasn't angry at God for taking her. I knew God had used her for a channel to get to me where to get me where I needed to be, she said. In fall 2020, Deb was one of six indigenous ministers ordained or commissioned in the United Church. I cried when I was ordained. It took eight years to get where God had been calling me. Since 2016, Deb has worked for the Regina Native Outreach Ministry. Today, she is working hard to help purchase a building. Our people will not go to a mainstream church. 
We have many lost people in the community, especially in the core area. We want a place where they can come and feel safe. That's our dream. Your mission and service gifts help to train ministry leaders who work to transform their community. Your generosity through mission and service support the Sandy Soto Center in Manitoba, where both indigenous and Christian spiritual beliefs are respected, shared, and understood. Where indigenous leaders like Deb answer God's call to the ministry of healing and hope. Thank you for your continued support to mission and service. And we wish to see the fruits of Jesus' ministry, and we want to experience God's reign on earth. The sharing of gifts is one way we can catch a glimpse of the reign of God. Thank you to everyone who continue to donate through PAR. You send in your offerings to our treasurers. For those of you who like to use the Bethune Facebook page donation button. And to all of you who give your time and talents to the workings of our church. Thank you so much. If you would like to make a donation to either Knox or Bethune United Church, please let me know. And I will put you in touch with our treasurer. So for all of our givings, let us give thanks. Let us pray. Holy One, you are generous in the blessings that you bestow upon us. We receive that gift of time to be intentional with how our time is used. We receive the gift of talent that our skills may be used for creative and restorative purposes. We receive the gift of income to share with those in need, to support ministries in their, this place, in our community and in the world, and to build your kingdom where, here on earth. Grant that the gifts we bring this day may be used for your glory and not our own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We move now to our prayers of the people, and because this is an online forum, I do not do specific prayers during this time. However, if there is someone for whom you would like to have prayer said, please feel free to get in touch with me, Facebook message, email, text, phone, however, whatever way you wish. Thank you to everyone who has been in touch, and for those of you who have let me know just how our prayers have been working within your loved one's life and within the community. Let us pray. God of the universe, you came into Jerusalem on the back of a young colt, not on chariots of fire. You came to serve and not be served. You came to deliver the good news of God's great love for us. Grant us a sense of your peace, which passes all understanding. For the world, we pray that we may be good stewards of its resources, that we would care for earth and be advocates for change where change is needed. For the nations of the world, we pray for their leaders that they would seek to do justice, advocate for the poor, the widow, the orphans, and the other and, and the others, and work towards your righteousness. For our community, we pray that you would allow us to be agents of change, a place of refuge, and a light in the darkness. And in this moment of silence, we lift up to you names of those of whom we are mindful. God grant all those named and unnamed may be recognized with your presence in their lives. We pray all this in love. Amen. So my friends, may we always hunger for justice until we are fed. May we always strive until there is justice and food for all. And may we never rest until we are all at peace. May it be so. Amen. While well, we make our way into another week, stay strong. Keep your masks on. Don't let your guard down just yet. The vaccines are rolling out. May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Grant you peace, perfect peace, courage in every endeavor. 
Lift up your eyes and seek God's face and God's grace forever. May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Have a wonderful week, my friends. Heads high, hearts open, masks on. Take care. God bless.